Hey everyone, so today we are looking at working with loops inside of Embergen. Uh, in today's example, we are looking at a small ground fire asset and we're gonna have it loop over say 300 or so frames. And over on the right here, you can see the composition in After Effects that I have brought this looped effect into. Um, every instance of fire and smoke in this composition is actually a loop of only say 300 frames and the composition itself is much, much longer. The real secret here is to offset the timing of all of these assets so they don't appear to be doing the exact same thing at the exact same time. And working with loops in this way is a nice way to save yourself uh, a, a bit of storage and a bit of memory. I'm sure your graphics card will thank you. So now we've seen what we're making, let's see how we make it. So I've got a fairly standard uh, fire simulation here. I'm giving off a, a tiny bit of smoke. Uh, I've got some shredding working in the simulation node here bit of vorticity and this shredding really just gives it that little that little kick of motion as it comes up. Once that's got some motion blur added to it, that should look really, really nice. And since what we're gonna do here is we're going to view this front on with our camera, which is already set up. If we bring on our sky box, we can see this, uh, this dark area here indicates that this isn't gonna be rendered by the camera. So we're rendering inside of this square here. One of the things that we should really do before we hit render is we should just check that we are capturing all of the effects. So I'm gonna turn the skybox off again. Fire's definitely inside. The smoke kind of comes up to the edge. I've made sure that it doesn't go right up to the edge by going into our volume processing node here and using our slicing mask. And I've knocked about 20% off of each side on the x-axis. And that just means that within 20% of getting to the edge, it's gonna fade out to nothing. And you can make that as subtle or as gradual or as immediate as you like, really. The important thing is that we don't let that smoke go past this line here. We have to make sure it disappears before there. If we don't do that, when we bring this effect across into After Effects, that hard line is gonna be really, really noticeable. And something that's kind of similar here as well, I've also adapted the very, very bottom of the fire here. Um, I've had it sort of fade in gradually uh, it's down here in the ground width and the offset. So I've brought up like the starting point ever so slightly and I've had it fade in over this short space. And that just means that we won't have a hard edge on the bottom of our fire, which should look out of place a little once we start compositing that onto our background plate. So I'll make sure that this preset's available to you as well as a couple of presets for the smoke that we're gonna use in the final composition as well. Um, but I'd encourage you to make your own, you know, see if you can make it. The important thing is to never go past the bounds of your camera. Cool, so now we've got that, let's go and check out our render options. I'm gonna make sure that we're rendering out a sequence because we're working with uh, film here rather than games. So think of this as game mode and film mode. Uh, our image size, I'm gonna render out at 2048 by 2048. We don't need these things to be super high definition, but we don't want them to look like garbage either. You know, some of these the camera might get fairly close to, we don't really know yet because we haven't put them into the scene. Now, when we're dealing with loops, we need to think about the beginning and end of our sequence. And there's two places where we have to set this. I've told our export to start at frame 100 and to run for 300 frames. We also need to tell our simulation where it's going to loop and that needs to match up. And it's gonna look a little weird, but I'll tell you why. We need to switch from no looping to loop simulation. You don't want to repeat the simulation, you want to loop it. We want the loop bounds to start from frame 100 to 399. And you might think, hang on, that's, that's not 300 frames. It is, because that first frame is inclusive. And just to see Embergen build the loop, if we pause here, we go up simulation, hard reset. When we hit play, our playhead's gonna come along and it's gonna start from scratch, okay? It's gonna go through the simulation and as it gets towards the end, we're gonna see it flip back and mix in the beginning of the animation again. See how it slows down ever so slightly. I think Embergen is caching what's going on. And when we get to the end, Nice. After a couple of goes through, it's looping seamlessly. So because it's looping here, we know that our exported frames are also going to loop. So with that, let's check out how our render is set up. 
we've got our dimensions, we've got our number of frames, we've got a directory to export our frames into. I'm exporting here as PNG files. Now, depending on how you're working, you're going to want either straight alpha or pre-multiplied alpha. You've got a drop-down box here to select between the two. Each of these approach rendering emissive pixels, i.e. the fire, slightly differently. In any case, we want two layers, one for the fire and one for the smoke. So let's choose emissive for the fire. Let's add a capture here for the smoke. Now the outputs for both of these are going to need to be set to RGBA because right now this would just export a color image with no transparency. Make sure you choose RGBA on both of these. Now if you're working with pre-multiplied alpha, then you can use the luminance here as the alpha for the emissive element, i.e. for the fire. And that is basically saying if it's bright, then it shows up. That gives it alpha. And if you're working with straight alpha, you would bring in another source, an alpha channel, and plumb that into the alpha here. Don't worry that it brings up uh, another output. Um, don't hit the trash can there because it will remove your input. Bring that back, pop that back into there. All you have to do is disconnect it from the output. And these outputs that aren't connected to anything, they won't generate any files, so don't worry about that. So when we hit export, we're gonna get two sequences of frames, one for the smoke, one for the fire. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sandwich those guys together once we get into After Effects. All right, one more thing to add. And this is just to prove a point because we were talking about looped simulations here um, and the reasons that we might use them. So one thing to keep in mind is saving space. You know, you have to save these things somewhere. You have to store them in memory or in VRAM when you're working with them. So the smaller they are, the less they weigh, the better. So a 300 frame looped animation is gonna weigh less than a non-looped animation that runs for thousands and thousands of frames. So these two in front of you, the one on the left is a 300 frame animation, I think. Um, and that weighs in at about 470 megabytes. Uh, the one on the right isn't looped at all. It just runs for thousands of frames. I think it comes in at about, it's over five gigs in size. Um, and if you were to watch them side by side, you'd have to watch for ages quite closely. I mean, they're, they're not particularly high quality effects, these ones. This was just to test the theory. Um, but you'd have to look for ages to figure out where they actually loop. Okay, so for, for background assets in, in scenes, like the one we're working with, a looped animation is totally fine because people aren't gonna look at it long enough to know that it's looped. Okay, so I've got our, our sequence of images loaded into After Effects and it's all playing in sequence here. Problem being, you know, it looks lovely when it's going, but sooner or later we get to the end of that sequence and it just goes dark. So what I need to do is tell After Effects that this is a looped sequence. It's pretty easy to do. I find the original files that I brought in. I go to interpret footage, main. All the way down the bottom, it says it loops one time. So let's loop it 999 times. Notice how it got longer over here. Let's do the same with the smoke layer. That should be this one. So right click, interpret, main. Loops one time, change it to 999. Cool, that's good. Also notice that I've got uh, more than one copy of the fire here, and that's really just to pump up the brightness a bit. You could do the same with the smoke if you wanted to thicken the smoke up. So somewhere in here is the beginning and end of our loop. We really don't need to worry about that now because it just loops forever. One thing I like to do with uh, assets like this is to add some motion blur. I think that can add quite a lot of uh, believability and the feel that it's something that was you know, captured in camera. Cool, so the motion's right. We've got some motion blur on there. I just wanna check that the transparency is okay now. So if I hit this checkerboard here, we can see that we've got some dark areas. This is the smoke. We just couldn't see it very well against the black background. And also we can see that our emissive and scattering layer is coming through nicely. So that should look pretty good when we drop it on top of our background plate. So with the interest of uh, not going on for too long, um, we're actually gonna do the compositing in the next video. But before we do that, let's go over some of the things that, that might have happened while you were trying to work through this. You know, sometimes things crop up and they can derail you. Let's go over like, you know, three or four things that might get in the way. So when you're working with loops, there are a couple of things that might stop them from working. The first thing is that your emitter has to be a volume emitter rather than a particle emitter. 
I would imagine that's because, you know, with a particle emitter, there's an awful lot of moving parts. There's a lot going on there. And that would be either really, really, really hard or impossible to make loop. So for the time being, we're using volume emitters when we're making loops. Likewise, there's a force called vorticals, which as it happens is particle based. We can't use this with a loop. When you try, you'll actually get this notice come up. You can hit continue and leave it in your node graph, but uh, it's not gonna loop. So you're gonna wanna highlight that, get rid of it. And just go over it one last time, uh, the differences between pre-multiplied alpha and straight alpha exports. So if you're working with pre-multiplied alpha, you can totally get away with using this luminance value into your emissive alpha, okay? And if you're using straight alpha, you'd bring in an alpha channel, an alpha source, and pop that into the alpha for the emissive output. Don't forget, in either case, you're gonna want RGBA rather than RGB, so you can capture the alpha information in your export. All right, cool. So we've got everything we need to start comping together in After Effects. We're gonna be doing that in the next video. In the meantime, if you've got any requests, any questions, please be sure to reach out, let me know on the Discord. I'll answer as many questions as I possibly can, and uh, I'll see you in After Effects in the next video.